Konnichiwa. Good afternoon. When the phone rings at 5 a.m. during the first week of October, one should be aware. It may be Stockholm calling. That's what happened today to our professor of chemistry, Dr. H. Nikishi, and his life will never be the same. He is a noblest. Ladies and gentlemen, our great honor, his great moment, Dr. H. Nikishi. Today, let me just say a couple more words about you, Dr. Nikishi. Yeah, no problem. Today we celebrate a new hero for science, for Purdue, for Indiana, and for the world. Born in Japan, Dr. Nagishi came to the United States to study on a Fulbright Fellowship. He later became a postdoc in the laboratory of Purdue's Professor Herbert C. Brown. He became a full professor of, of, at Purdue in the fall of 1979, which was just three months before Dr. Brown himself received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. Dr. Nagishi's work is in the area of organic chemistry, specifically linking carbon atoms together to form complex molecules that have become essential tools in creating new drugs and polymers. These uh, drugs and polymers have had a tremendous impact on the pharmaceutical industry and on you and me. Teaching is another passion of Dr. Nagishi. Today, he was insistent that he wanted to be there to teach his organic chemistry class to undergraduates, to sophomores. There were 300 students in the class, and I understand today a lot of media, is that right? We're extremely proud and honored that Professor Nagishi and his work have been recognized at the very highest level by the Nobel Prize Committee. Dr. Nagishi, will you step forward and be recognized? Congratulations well, on this great thank you. moment thank for you, you for Purdue, much. for all of us. Well, it, it is my real pleasure to be able to stand here in front of you. And I know the impact of this as a disciple, a student of Professor Brown, who also won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 19, back in 1979. And uh, I was, shortly before that, I was in Syracuse spending seven years as assistant professor and associate professor. But uh, without knowing that he was winning, <laughs> three months before he won, I came back. I was invited back to Purdue as a full professor. So I was here, and uh, as, a, as a consequence of that, and of course, uh, you know, uh, because of my long, long time relation you know, with him, he invited me to Stockholm. He invited more, more people, but uh, many others were not here at Purdue. And uh, they were not allowed, Purdue, <laughs> would not allow them or support, allow Professor Brown to support them or whatever. They did not have the pri uh, privilege of uh, accompanying Professor Brown to Stockholm, to Stockholm uh, which I had, and a few others. And uh, it was 31 years ago. And uh, so, in my opinion, for this highly reputed big university, it's been a long time. <laughs> I understand recently there was uh, some, uh, uh, another exciting moment, uh, which I'm sorry, I was not acutely <laughs> Anyway, so uh, as probably my CV document, uh, if you have that, uh, indicate, uh, I grew up in Japan and uh, went to Tokyo, University of Tokyo, and uh, joined uh, in that company, uh, polymer company in Japan. Then I learned that uh, I was not a researcher. I was not ready as a researcher. 
and they gave me an assignment, big assignment, and uh, I was completely awed by that <laughs> assignment. And I decided to go back to university for further learning. And I had two choices. One was to go back to Japanese university, but they would charge me tuition. <laughs> and uh, my parents and I, <laughs> we were not, not, not very uh, rich, or we were very poor, I should say. So I was agonizing over this you know, dilemma. I want to go back to, uh, go back to university for higher education, but we didn't have enough money. In the meantime, I learned that uh, there was a wonderful American uh, uh, program called the Fulbright Smith Mount All Expense Scholarship Program. And uh, I thought this might be the way for me to do, <laughs> for me to go. And I started studying English <laughs> day and night. <laughs> Only problem was that uh, success ratio, success ratio was one in hundred. So I went to, uh, I was in the Hiroshima area, I went to Hiroshima Cultural Center, International and the Cultural Center. There were about 200 applicants, and then I said, wait a minute, only two maybe out of 200, indeed final, final uh, recipients were only two. So I was lucky, <laughs> one of the two. And that's how I came to this country. 50 years ago, and uh, I was so grateful to this Fulbright Smith Mount program. And I was really awed by what I saw, what I encountered in this country. And during the three years when I was, uh, I stayed three years in, in uh, Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, I had uh, unexpected pleasure of uh, attending uh, at least probably 10, 10 Nobel Prize winners or those who are at the top of the field and then they were eventually, they eventually won Nobel Prize, including my own professor, Professor Brown. I heard him speak, give a lecture in Philadelphia in 1962. That really uh, set the direction of my, my future. So, and uh, I, I learned from scratch you know, most everything at the professional level in this country. So I'm uh, very much grateful to America. And of course, I am grateful to my home country, Japan, which sort of trained me through, as some of you may know, very rigorous college entrance examination system. <laughs> <laughs> and I am, a, I am a strong supporter of that system, maybe modified a little bit, but uh, without it, I probably didn't study as hard as I did. <laughs> and those are the things that I use daily for promoting my, propelling my research, believe me. Because what I learned in all graduate level and higher level, uh, those are, of course, high-level, uh, you know, intelligence, I mean, uh, but when you start doing your own thing, what is critically important is more fundamental things. Physics, math, and the logic, and uh, how, you, how you try to live your, your career, profession. So those are the things that uh, I must say I acquired most of those back in Japan. And uh, this <laughs> extra rigorous college entrance examination system, I'm, I'm actually all for it. Not, for, not applied to all young people, but for those who are aspire to make a major impact in their own profession, I think this rigorous, rigorous uh, entrance, entrance exam you know, uh, preparation system. I think it's a great system. And this country can benefit greatly by at least partially uh, importing that sort of system. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, then, so <clears throat> I met all these people. And then I, I would say, before that, Nobel was a sort of a story, not, not uh, realistic. Not realistic thing. But during those three years that I attended uh, the incumbent, or like, uh, you know, the Nobel Prize winners, as well as uh, what I would call a future <laughs> Nobel Prize winners, and then my prediction turned out to be pretty, uh, pretty accurate. <laughs> so I knew I predicted that the Professor Brown would win pretty soon because he was a major innovator of uh, organic organometallic chemistry. But uh, that took him uh, some 16, 17 years after that. So maybe everything takes time. So, but uh, I went back after my getting the PhD degree back to Japan. And then I went through some agonizing moment with ambivalent feeling, you know, what I was going to do in the future. But uh, with time, I became so determined to pursue academic you know, uh, research career. For that, I felt that I needed to have uh, another mentor, you know, the mentor went through this apprenticeship, so to speak. Then I chose, well, actually, I applied for 10, 10 or so. I made 10 or so applications, and I received uh, three offers. Uh, second one was, came from uh, Professor Melvin Calvin, who was already a Nobel Prize winner by then at uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, but uh, I chose Professor Brown who came here. So I think I chose him. <laughs> <laughs> even though he, he still made a final decision. And uh, it was uh, truly a marvelous uh, apprenticeship. I mean, it was, it was rigorous, uh, you know, uh, logical, rational, uh, excluding any speculations or uh, whatever. And uh, when we, we keep excluding the speculations, what still want to survive, we begin to consider them as Nobody knows. Only God knows what truth is. But as I said, this rigorous exclusion of uh, uh, untruths, then we can begin coming close, closer and closer to the truth. So all these things, I, I think I learned from Professor Brown. And I'm very, very grateful to his mentorship. <coughs> 